Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you once again for watching it. Uh, today's, today's video is an updated version of a video that I have earlier put in, which is to export Sentinel data to Azure Data Explorer for long-term retention. Um, this video basically touches on a few features uh, that I have not spoken in the previous video. In this video, I would like to mainly discuss about a particular example. Um, let's say I've got I've got a customer here who has requested f about five terabyte worth of data every day. They would like to to archive that data that's coming into their log analytics workspace, and they have told me to please find out what's the best and most cost effective solution. To do the archive, their uh, requirement is five terabyte worth of data to be uh, archived for seven years. So by default, the four options that we have for archiving are these: the native Sentinel archives only for two years, um, and the most expensive option. So this definitely gets ruled out because they want seven years. The next one is the pre is the new feature that they have released as of February 2022. It is it is a very easy process to implement. It is definitely cheaper than the first option to put it into native Sentinel, but it is much much expensive than the option two and option three. The option third is Data Explorer. It's cheaper than the previous version or the, the Sentinel archive. Bit cumbersome, I must admit, to implement. However, it is much more cost effective and provides a lot more functionalities, which is similar to the native Sentinel archive. The fourth one is a storage account. Basically, all your data goes into storage account, the cheapest option, hands down. However, it has got the longest time to restore data. It doesn't have any smarts behind it. And Microsoft recommends to use this particular uh, storage account for data that's not going to be retrieved unless and until some compliance issues strike up. So the, the uh, solution that we have recommended, considering the scenario that the client wanted was Data Explorer combined with storage account. So to give you a cost comparison, um, I'm just going to quickly show you. So basically here, if I go with the native Sentinel, it's only for two years, like how I said. In the second year itself, every month, we will be paying roughly about $577,000. With Sentinel Archive, which is the newer version, um, it's cheaper than that. It's about a hundred, about close to about $100,000 cheaper. However, hands down, the cheapest is and the one that we have recommended is going down ADX route, which is the Azure Data Explorer combined with storage account. You, get, you pay roughly one fourth of the cost. So this is our option. Um, there are other factors that come into this, which is your event hub is the way is, is, is the medium that does the transfer from log analytics workspace into your Azure Data Explorer the exporting itself the exporting process is expensive that's costing about thirty-one thousand dollars your storage cost and your adx cost all this combined is about hundred thirty-one thousand, which is roughly one fourth the cost of the central archive don't worry i will show you step by step as to how to do this it makes it, it makes it easier the t you the first time you do it it's going to be hard the second time is going to be fairly okay the third time no matter what you can definitely do it even in your sleep so let's get the ball moving um, the first process like how i said here is you've got to set up your log analytics data export your event hub and following that you will then create your azure data explorer and then you will combine all of these together which i will show you in a second As mentioned, the first step is to create the event hub uh, for the event hub to facilitate or be a medium to transfer data from your uh, log analytics workspace into Azure Data Explorer. You will normally use event hub for any sources that's not, not 
directly attached to your Sentinel. So things like ADX, your dot, Azure Lakes, Data Lakes, any other third party SIEM resources, you normally use Event Hub. So the Event Hub, considering the scenario what we have right now, we have to, give me a second, I will just show you as we speak, it makes it easier. We will have to decide what Event Hub namespace we have to create. So this is just your resource group. You can give it any name as long as it's uh, Sentinel Premium um, East US. That's the cheapest. So I'm just using that for now. Yep. The pricing tier. The one that we, in my situation, we what we are recommend is Premium. Why do we use Premium? It's because we have five terabyte worth of data. If you use premium you can you get something called processing units one processing unit I've, i will put all this link uh, in the attachment one processing unit will roughly give me uh, 5 to 10 megabits per second so roughly 1 terabyte is roughly 1 terabyte you will have for one processing unit you know, considering, considering that i have 5 terabyte worth of data i would be using about 5 to even 8 processing units to to for the demand that is going to come into the environment as you can see here um, the, in this link um, you have roughly this is what it says your event have premium namespace with one PU you can have up to 5 to 10 megabits per second so to convert 5 so there are calculators anyway outside where you can basically convert 10 megabits per second to one terabyte per day and you can find out how much PUs you need um, also another good thing with using premium is uh, with premium you don't have any caps to the event hubs that you create um, whereas with the standard you can use only 10 event hubs you will see what I'm trying to say in a second that that particular thing is removed if you use premium as well so I'm just going to um, hold on to what I'm saying um, you will find out very quickly um, I normally always like to put a tag um, security I don't know. So let's say security sentinel I always like to put a tag and let's create this Create. This will take roughly about two minutes. I'll come back soon once it's complete. Okay, so as you can see, it's now there. So I'm going to my resource just to confirm. Okay, so as you can see, there is no event hub here. We have only created the event hub namespace. It is premium eight units. Um, okay, so the next step, what we want to do is we want to create or we want to facilitate the export. So I'm going into my Log Analytics workspace itself. Log Analytics workspace. I'm going to select the one here. And in here, um, I'm just going into Data Export. Yep, that's here. And I'm just going to create an export rule. In this export rule, I'm just going to create a, a test rule, test rule, Sentinel. And this is what I'm talking about. If you don't use premium, you can only select 10 exports in one particular namespace. So I currently, as you can see, I might have close to, I don't know, 120 to 138. Um, you can't have all of them together in standard. That's why I chose a premium as well. If you click into that, I'm just going to go into my event hub, as you can see, all here. Now, once it comes here, you, as you can see here, I don't create a event hub name. So to confirm here, event hubs, I don't create a name. It will automatically create based on the data that flows in the tables that I am currently exporting, which is everything. So I'm currently exporting all these tables. The moment data comes to any one of these tables, it will automatically create an event hub 
within the event hub namespace. It's going to click on create. Okay, so that's that's the one here that's enabled. So my next step is I just I'm not I'm not going to be waiting for alerts to be generated the old-fashioned way. So I'm just going to create some test alerts. The easiest way to create test alerts is I have integrated my Defender for Cloud to my Sentinel. I am just going to generate some sample alerts from Defender for Cloud. So it will hit Sentinel. It will go into those tables that we have exported. And I should be seeing Event Hub entries here. So let's go into and start um, and start basically going into and just start generating those sample alerts. This is my security alerts. I'm just going and just saying sample alerts. Don't want all of them. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four and create sample alerts. This sample alerts will automatically start generating here high alerts. It is going into my log analytics workspace. My workspace says please do continuous export of all the tables. And from there, it then goes to Event Hub, and I shall see those uh, those um, alerts being triggered into the table. And I should see these tables with a with a prefix of AM hyphen. Um, you will see that. So it's just a matter of time. I'm just going to pause the uh, video till um, I let, allow the sample alerts to be generated, and I can start seeing Event Hubs here. Okay, so. Um... As you can see here, I, I've got a, um, an event hub called am-heartbeat. As I mentioned, if you see here, uh, an entry would have gone into that uh, particular table heartbeat and it immediately creates an event hub called am-heartbeat. If you open that up, you will suddenly start seeing entries here. There you go. Another, another thing I want to mention, um, the our customer in this example also wanted to simultaneously copy data into the storage account as well. Um, and so the cheapest way of doing that, as I show here, I have got it here, is as I mentioned, doing a data export is, an, is, is not a cheap process. We want to have only one data export exporting to uh, Azure Data Explorer. And at the same time, we want to use that same data export to export into the blob as well. So you don't have to pay this two times. The way to do that is to use something called a capture method. Before we do the capture method, you would want to create a storage account. So I've, I've got, I went to my storage account, so I've opened a storage account here, and I'm just going to create a container here called Heartbeat. Okay, Heartbeat's taken. No, it's because I have it in capital letters. Yep, Heartbeat. I want to create that. Yep, once that's created, I then go back into my... Uh, event hub namespace go into that particular event hub which is am hyphen heartbeat and then there is an option here to do capture this capture you need to go in the avr of format and you go you can say okay how much window or how much data or do you want the capture to be done every 15 minutes yes and the maximum data so 500 mb i'm happy to be done every 15 minutes it's then going to ask please select the container the container what we have selected is here and it's that heartbeat here. So I'm using the one data explore, um, one data export to both event uh, Azure Data Explorer and also to the storage account. And I'm going to go save. Okay, perfect. So, so just to recap, we have done event hub namespace, created the event hub namespace itself. We have that's, that's the namespace here. This is event hub namespace itself. We then went and created the event hub. There you go. You can see the next one has come in. So uh, because it's automatically creating, it will automatically keep populating the moment you have data coming. So just to recap, we have got the event hub namespace. The event hub has been automatically created. We then went into the, diff, uh, the Explorer itself. And in Explorer, you have set up data export to the event hub. 
um, you then went and generated sample alerts to, to start populating and seeing data in the event hub. And within the event hub itself, you created something called a capture to simultaneously export data to two places, one to the storage account and one to Azure Data Explorer. Okay, the next step what we have find one of the uh, next steps are is to create a Azure Data Explorer itself. So I would have one automatically created from memory, but I'll just quickly look. Um, Azure Data Explorer. Okay, so um, as you can see, I have now spun up an Azure Data Explorer here and a cluster. And then I've already, by the way, I have already done this in my previous video. So when you see, see my previous video, um, it should be there on step by step on what to do. Um, fairly easy, uh, and but however, if you want to see it, it's always there in the previous video. So I've got a Data Explorer cluster that I've created. The next step here is to create database. The database here, you just need to create add database and you give it the retention period, basically how long the data will stay in this particular uh, cluster and cache the moment you retrieve data how long will it stay in its cache ideally you would want to make the cache small because that's the most expensive bit cool so i've created that i've done this next i want to show you is actually a very good linkedin post on how to export data this is the end scenario that i have discussed it's a very good post but they don't have a video which is why i put the video in in this, it's basically saying you need to create a Data Explorer cluster. You've created an event hub. We have already done all that. And uh, it's giving you step by step on that. Creating a namespace, yada, yada. We have done that. The next bit here is this particular method where you create a table and table mapping. You basically create that based on a script that Xavier has already created. I will show you that in a second. If I open that up. So. While that is loading, just to confirm the, the, the steps what we want to do or the outcome what we want is we have created uh, automatically there was a heartbeat that was there you go you've got the third one now. So automatically there was a heartbeat that was created that was basically moved or exported because we exported this particular table. It is currently in event hub. It also goes into the storage account. Now we are going to give me a second once it decides to load. Yep, via the capture process, we are also capturing that into a storage account in this particular format, namespace event hub portion ID. Sorry, this is the namespace event hub portion ID year, month, day. You're going into a storage account and now we are basically continuing it to, to export the data from your event hub into ADX. That's the step what we are doing. So it's heartbeat, by the way, that's a, that's a table. So, okay, so if I go back to this blog post, which I will again put in my link, you go into Xavier's partial script. It's very stock standard. You click on raw. So I've just clicked on that link. You click on raw. And all what you need to do is run this query. The, e the easiest way I have found to do that is I would, I would go into the GUI within the portal itself. So once it decides to load, requesting a cloud shell, it's going to be asking you a couple of items when you run that. It's going to be asking you for the table name that is heartbeat in our instance it will also ask you for the workspace id these are the only two things you need to do okay so it's ready here so the script is here i've create i've let's copy that again let's go back and let's paste it here yep and it's asking you for the table name you now go back here i know the table name is here you all please make sure you have uh, the the caps all intact you can't go with a small h, a h and a small b or or a capital b you need to be exactly how it's in the uh, table itself so you go back here it's going to ask you what is the table i'm going to go heartbeat 
what's your workspace ID? That's your log analytics workspace ID. I'm going to close that, go open that up, and that's your workspace ID. Click on that. So the moment you do that, paste, bang, enter. It's as simple as that. It's going to provide you certain values you would need to create. Do an enter again, and that's it. You need to create that again in your um, data explorer query. So I'm just going to, I like to just copy that out, go into my notepad. I guess this notepad here. Or just delete this off. You don't need that anymore. Control V. Okay, expand that. So some of the things you don't need it, just delete that. Items, all your PS and things like that. Could delete that. Delete that, all these unwanted things. I'm cleaning up this. Okay, right. Um, and Okay, so there are six entries like you see here. So all, just to confirm, all what I've done is I've gone here, went, copy pasted everything, all these unwanted things like here, here, all these things I've just removed, and I've only kept the ones in green. And you start from here. You see this copy and run the following commands. That's what you need to do. Copy. I, I normally do it into a notepad. Delete all the unwanted things, and basically now very simple. Just enter that into the query. So go here, go into storage account, database, going into my query. Once it decides to load, okay, so it's loading, it's taking time to load. All right, I'm going to do a refresh again. It's still loading as you can see. Yep, third time lucky. <laughs> okay, don't worry about that. That's just um, a generic item. I'm going and going and pasting it. So basically what I had in my notepad, I'm pasting it here. So as you can see, I'm running the steps. All what you see, this is first is going to create a table. So I'm just going to click on run. It's going to create the table and it's going to create another one called raw mapping. It's going to run. Then it does a policy retention, run again. This is what it's going to do. It's going to do those columns that I've discussed in my first video, all these columns. It's going to create that here. Run again. Okay, so once we've done that, just going to go and create this. Run. And finally, I'm going to do the alter table. Okay, so cool. So it's basically linked to the raw, uh, basically linked your table with the raw mapping. It will ingest all these records in this particular format and it'll create and alter that function and alter the table with those particular policy updates. Cool, so finally we just need to link all of them together. Um, I like to basically just copy this and I'll show you in a second. So just copy this at something that calls raw mapping. You then now go into data connectors you click on an event hub and I'd like to start from here if you click here you see that you can oh, mapping yep you need the raw mapping that's the mapping name which is in the table that you just created you can now just delete remove that mapping name and go into JSON so that's the table that you have just created thank you very much the name of the data connection name you can give this anything but I like to keep it as the same as what we have with the log with the table name in the log analytics workspace itself. This is my subscription. This is my event hub namespace. Once it figures out, it's going to ask me what is my event hub. As you know, I've got the one with an AM suffix, which is AM heartbeat. And it's got a consumer group of default. That's what it's standard created with every namespace. Compression as none. As you see here, you will have system assigned identities not authorized to access. So you need to provide or you need to 
give this particular system identity or your account itself should have um, either an owner role or a contributor with three additional uh, permissions which I will post in the link below you need to have those three permissions along with the contributor role to actually have permissions to give this particular system ID that's going to be created and access to that particular event hub um, I have got that created because I'm an owner but also you can also have custom uh, roles as well which I will put it in the chat window so click on create all going well when you're validating data connection all going well it should automatically get created touch wood okay right it's, it's creating that connection like how we said okay so it looks like it's all good if I refresh this again I should ideally see and if you look into here see uh, look into here there you go I have got I've got this particular heartbeat if I go into the health section the way you come to know there is uh, that that it's definitely okay because you can see the data connection name if there's any issues with either the system assigned identity or the connections you will see that this will be empty so again this is going to take about 20 25 minutes to start populating data I'm just going to wait for this to populate data uh, and then I will then show you a couple of ways how you can access this data. Um, the most common way is to do it from the log analytics workspace itself, but I need to first populate some data before doing that. I'll wait for that and then I'll come back. Thanks guys, so I've waited for about um, five minutes. I've gone to my data connections where we have just created the heartbeat go into my health section and if I go for the last one hour if you see there is some entries here that's good so uh, looks like everything is going good as we speak so as I said there are two ways of seeing the queries the way that is not very much followed is doing it via the query in the data explorer database itself you can find it from there so all we need is just go into and just type in uh, heartbeat heartbeat and I don't know, limit 10 um, and just click on run so this is running the query from the database explorer itself but ideally in the in a scenario ideally in a um, normal scenario your SOC analyst would be doing everything solely working in this the workspace itself so you in this workspace you go into your log analytics workspace there go into logs okay so go into your log analytics workspace go into logs and in logs you then type a d x and it's very simple there you go I'll even give you this one so you need to do something between this you go into your um, database itself where is the database Yep, the database itself. Now, uh, database, and you select this name here. So within the go within the, the query, you go into the query, you select that here. Um, put it into here. Dot heartbeat because that's that's the one that I want. Heartbeat. I'm just making sure my uh, caps are the same as well. So theoretically, it should basically query from there and pull it out. There you go. Voila this is how it is now for every table that you create please note for every table it's not hard uh, where is that for every table that you create or every data connection that you create here your first bit of that one which is to search for the database is the same so whether you go into heartbeat or whether you go into security alert everything this particular section is always the same you you just then need to go I don't have anything called security alert because I only created heartbeat so this is not going to come back with anything because I haven't done that yeah but everything is the same except for this particular table and this particular table is the one that you're going to reference um, going to reference here in your data explorer you go into data connections and 
So if you've got 400 different tables, your name is still going to be the same. It's dot heartbeat dot security alert dot something and you go and get the results here. Uh, yes, I hope you guys found this useful. It's uh, I will put all the links for everything that I've researched in the bottom and feel free to post any questions as well and I will get that answered in the um, in the in the comments window. Um, now, th two things which I wanted to uh, uh, tell you is the roles that you require. Uh, now, to read the data in your log analytics workspace from uh, the Azure Data Explorer, you will need to have the database viewer. Your user needs to be in permissions. You go here, you need to add your your particular user. Like for example, I've got this user here. She is added as a database viewer. The moment you add this database viewer is the time you'll be able to contribute. On top of that, in your, if you want to read the data in your storage account, I think I've created a storage account here. Let me go into my storage account. To read the data for the storage account that we just created, you need to be giving them a permission called storage blob data reader. So over here you go, you go into here and then you need to give them add your role assignment of storage blob data reader this one so you need to give that user these two roles and um, finally like how I mentioned um, there was a particular role that you needed to create that system identity in your ADX the one that I've just mentioned um, here which is under here the system managed identity this one here the role for that is of course owner but if your enterprise is going to say no 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 we can't give you owner rights uh, then you can create the custom roles to create the custom roles for that particular job is go into your subscription itself go into um, Azure as your access control go add custom role go and just say I don't know uh, access to uh, create identity just an example there start from scratch is fine go and you click on add permissions in add permissions you go into Microsoft authorization Microsoft dot authorization yeah and in Microsoft dot authorization our, the role that you need are get role assignment in role assignments so if I go down P I saw an R somewhere. Yeah, give it role assignments and authorization role assignment schedule request. That's not the one. There you go. These ones here. So just make sure you have these three particular roles that you require. Um, just click on add and assign that user to this particular customer. He should be able to create the system identities. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Uh, there is. I uh, okay. So if you want, there is one more. Uh, is how to read from the storage account itself. I already have got that in this particular video or even in another one of my videos in my blog. I can put that as a link as well to how to read um, your data or your um, or the data that's in your storage account that we have done through the capture method. How to read that. That's there in that as well. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. I hope you found this useful. Anything else, please leave it in your comments. Uh, have a great day.